Jay Quellen. No Jay Quellen here? Balake. Where is Balake at? A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is right here, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am so excited to share this with you today. Mike Rowe. The man, the myth, the legend, the man of the people, a man I love. I love everything about this guy. Mike Rowe is fully dedicated to getting the tax-exempt status of Scientology revoked. As if anyone needed yet another reason to love Mike Rowe. Now look, I did a video about Mike Rowe several months ago. He had interviewed um, a mutual friend of ours, someone he's known for a long time. Her name is Spanky Taylor. She was featured in the documentary Going Clear. And Mike interviewed Spanky on his podcast. Mike Rowe's podcast, by the way, is called The Way I Heard It. And if you're not subscribed to this podcast, check it out. You can listen to it anywhere where you get your podcast. Now Mike Rowe has done an interview with Mike Rinder. Mike Rowe has posted a five minute clip of the interview to his YouTube channel. Guys, I haven't even listened to it yet. I don't know what exactly they discuss. I don't know what Mike Rowe asks. Watch this with me and let's find out. To be here today talking to you, really thrilled. This is the, the single podcast interview that I have actually been looking forward to. That is uh, some high cotton, Mike Rinder. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, although I don't know when a guy, when a Scientologist, a former Scientologist, tells you that he watches your show religiously, it's difficult <laughs> to know how to take that. That is a very good point. That is a very good yeah. point. Well, that was religiously after I left. I wasn't uh, watching TV when I was there in the Sea Org. It was after I left. So, Did they even it allow... Was a, TVs on the Apollo? Oh, no. No, there was no t no TVs on the Apollo. Even subsequent to that, there, like when we arrived at the Fort Harrison, there were TVs in all the rooms because it was a hotel. But yeah. we weren't allowed to watch them. What a nightmare you are to these people. I mean, people come and go from all sorts of churches and organizations all of the time. And, and many times they don't have flattering things to say. But you, you were... What, third from the top or, or, or close to it? Yeah, I was, you know, I was the international spokesperson for Scientology for two decades. I was on the board of directors of the Church of Scientology International from when I helped create it until I escaped in 2007, you know, like 30, 25 years. So, yes, I was in a very senior position and... You know, as you will know from my book, I was brought into the world of Scientology at a very young age. I joined what was called the C organization, which is like the inner circle of Scientology. And you sign a billion year contract to, to, uh, you know, pledge yourself for eternity to achieving the aims of Scientology, which is, that's where the name of the book comes from. Sure. But probably more significantly and more significantly with respect to the book, I brought two children into that world. Mm -hmm. And those two children remain there to this day. And um, the book is actually addressed to them mm -hmm. with the hope that one day they will actually be able to read it and know who I am or was. And, you know, maybe they'll read it after I passed on. Who knows? But it's important to me, and I lay out in the beginning of the book, why do I keep going? Well, it's really because of that. Because I want them to have the freedom to think for themselves. And it's my belief at this point, Mike, the only way that that will happen, the only way to break them out of the prison is to blow up the prison. <laughs> I think the reason your book is number one is because you're taking a very big swing and you are trying to correct a very great wrong, but you're doing it in a very personal way. This is micro and macro at the same time. You're taking a big swing at a tax-exempt organization that uses taxpayer money and dedicates it exclusively to a wing within the organization whose sole purpose is to harass and attack. People need to understand that. But here you sit estranged from your kids. And that estrangement goes right to the very heart, I think, of what 
is so troubling and so personal to so many other people who are estranged from their family for, for whatever reason. But you've, you've tapped into an enormous thing that's also an intensely small and personal thing. And here's a question no one has ever asked you before. Yep. I, I listened to you on Patrick Bet David. I yep. listened to you on Megan Kelly. I listened yep. to you on CBS this morning. How cool is that? That micro's like, I'm watching all the interviews that you do. It's so awesome. I've watched all the same interviews. I love it. I listened to you on 60 Minutes, Australia. Well, you've been busy. Well, look, man, I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> you, you've probably been interviewed by a lot of people who think they know you. Yes. And you, you've probably answered every conceivable question, but What's on my mind right now is how does it feel to be really under the microscope talking so intimately about something so personal that has the ramifications to literally change thousands of people's lives? I mean, it's deadly serious what you're in the midst of right now. And um, I just wonder how that feels on a day to day basis for you. Well, you're right, Mike. Nobody has ever asked me that question before. Like, I thought you were joking. I thought you were going to give me some, like, you know, routine question everybody asks all the time. No, no, That's ma'am. I went for it, ma'am. I, w I was oh, going to ask did. you where that Emmy tell came us from, about but I'm saving that. <laughs> tell us about Xenu. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Tell us about Xenu. Right, right. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, how does it feel? It feels, it feels very uh, a heavy burden. Oh, they're going to do the cliffhanger. Okay. I am going to post a link above to the last uh, video that I did about Mike Rowe. This guy and the interview that he did with Spanky Taylor. Because that way you'll really get kind of uh, a more broader and deeper concept of, of how dedicated Mike Rowe is personally to doing everything he can to see, the, uh, to see Scientology's tax-exempt status revoked he touched on it here them using tax-exempt dollars he really touches on it in the interview with spanky in fact here's a little clip from that interview um that i that i have used to promote that video here listen to this i was angry the first time i watched this documentary going clear i wrote something on facebook and people still ask me about that post and they still ask me what's new in the world of scientology it, because something's got to be done hun. these guys are still in business and for the life of me it just Chaps my ass to no end. So, you know, one of the things he talks about in that interview is, you know, when you hear someone talk about putting Scientology out of business, that is pretty much one in the same of getting their tax exempt status removed. It is it is the recognition that they have this this version of tax exemption that they have that recognizes them as a religion from the IRS. That is what allows Scientology to continue to exist, to continue to accumulate funds. Uh, to continue to uh, wiggle their way through the court system in a way that they would never be able to do so without that tax-exempt status. And so it is a very correct thing to target and to go after. And Mike Rowe is one of the few out there doing his part to bring that about. So show Mike Love's podcast some love. Uh, again, it's called The Way I Heard It, um, and you can find it anywhere where you find your podcasts. And so before I sign off, uh, I would be remiss if I did not take an opportunity to once again share with you guys, look at these handsome little devils. These are Mike Rinder bobbleheads. Why do I keep talking about Mike Rinder bobbleheads? Because guys, the Aftermath Foundation is a nonprofit organization that helps people who are escaping from Scientology. Um, the non, uh, we help people restart their lives, in some cases completely from scratch. We get them jobs, we get them transportation, we get them a place to live, we get them resettled where uh, in a place of their choosing. And these bobbleheads are sold on the spshop.com. 100% of the proceeds from the spshop.com go towards the Aftermath Foundation. Mike Rinder is on the board of the Aftermath Foundation. I'm the vice president of the Aftermath Foundation, and we've been wildly successful in helping people escape from Scientology. And also when we help people escape, and these people happen to have experiences and evidence relating to crimes, crimes the government would be interested in, crimes that one Scientology is found guilty of, will be the key to reviewing and revoking their tax-exempt status. We show them exactly 
uh, where they can go and who they can talk to to share their experience and share their evidence with the proper authorities. So we are also doing our part uh, to accomplish that end goal of seeing Scientology uh, taken down, uh, seeing them lose their tax-exempt status. It's not the purpose of the Aftermath Foundation. It's a happy side product. It's the icing on the cake, if you will. So anyway, we just, for the holiday season, ordered like 500 of these puppies, and they're not doing us any good on the shelves. So go to the spshop.com and order yourself some Mike Rinder bobbleheads. All right, everyone, that's all I have. Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!